Hello, everyone. We are Retreat. I am Kelly. I was one of the designers. I'm Erica. I was one of the designers. I'm Emma. I'm a developer. I'm Chris. I'm also a developer. I'm Aziz, and, uh, and I am a developer. And I'm Alex, and I'm also a developer. And I'm Adam. I'm a developer. Retreat is our app aimed at what we like to call the on-the-go pet parent. She is a millennial, she's a dog owner, she's a college graduate, and a young professional. We focused on this target market because 77% of millennials are actually extending their non-child adult life by uh, forgoing human children and raising fur babies for a while. Um, we focused on dog moms because dog moms <coughs> tend to spend more money than cat moms or cat ladies on their dogs. Um, they tend to be early adopters of new services and programs, and they tend to be um, opinion leaders within the market. As well as dogs are a more intensive pet, they require more care and would be searching for a service like this. And the problem that we're solving with Retreat is the fact that our on-the-go pet parent is attached to her dog. And she likes knowing that her pet is being well cared for while they're separated. So what's nice about Retreat is that it's a centralized app for the pet sitter and the pet owner to stay communicated and connected without the pet parent feeling like she's overbearing or kind of hovering over her pet sitter. And it's an easy on-the-go way for the pet sitter to keep them informed. Okay, so here's our demo. We start out with the home screen. You have your sitting pets and, my, and your own pets that you own. On top, we have a collection view that has each pet with a pet uh, photo and a chance to add a pet that you adopted. Next would be a collection view of photos that you can add that the sitter adds of your pets. And below that is an activities table, which we will, and which will display what the pet did, um, which pet it is, and at what time that the pet did that activity. And so now, whenever you press the Add Pet button in the collection view, you'll be taken to the new pet profile page, which allows the user to enter various things, such as the um, pet name, the owner name, uh, various medication needs, the vet information needs. So we'll go ahead and let him do that. Um, you can also have the option to choose the profile, and then you can select that from your photos. You have the option, an action sheet appears, where you can choose to take a photo, or you can add one from your current photos. And up at the top, it allows you to save the pet, which then it adds you back to that collection view. Um, so now, say you've made a mistake and you need to go back in and edit a pet, um, you can tap on whichever one. It'll take you back to the screen. The user will be notified, or you'll be notified by uh, the different change in color of the background, allowing you to know that you cannot edit anything until you press the edit button up at the top, which then changes it back to that normal white color, allowing um, the user to edit the different text fields and the different uh, labels. It also presents the user with the ability to delete the pet as well. After the invitation is being made, the pet sitter will receive a randomly generated 10 characters code that allows them to, to, to access to the pet's owner profile the pet, sitter will res the pet sitter will open the, the app and confirm the invitation. I'd just like to elaborate on the invitation screen. So this is your new invitation screen where you're given the options to add all of your uh, data. So you have your start date picker, your end date picker, and uh, in addition to that, you can put the sitter name, the phone number, and the location. 
Um, so for the location, you click on the location, it'll automatically give you uh, your current location to save, and you can also search for another location in uh, the navigation bar. Um, so after you save it, it'll show back up in your invitation screen. Um, you can add the sitter name, which I'll just do my name, and uh, the sitter phone number, which we'll do. And additionally, you do have to add some pets um, so we'll add Doug and Spot here. And when we send this invitation, it will prompt us to use the iMessage. It'll bring up, uh, it'll populate the address bar with uh, the phone number that we entered on the previous screen and uh, add the invitation code for them to send. And so I just sent it to myself. And so now that we've sent it, we get the, as the person sitting the pet, you get that notification. And as the person that owns the pet, you now have the invitation in your invitation screen. And I got to tell you right now, that form screen you wrote, you made me smile like six times. It's totally, you know, from the, the date picker coming up the way you did, the keyboard dismissing, all those things you did. Spot on. Thank you. So, still good. Thank you, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> And so we did have some issues with our Heroku server, so we don't uh, have all of our photos and activities populated right now. But as you can see, when you go to the sitting pet screen, you'll get the pets you're sitting, and this would normally populate the photos and activity with all of the photos and activities of pets you're sitting. And then you can click on a specific pet, and it'll take you to their individual page where you can see their activities, see the photos that have been uploaded of that specific pet, and then the add buttons on the side will allow you to add a photo of the pet, uh, which will just use the Apple photo thing, and activity, which will present another picker with the cancel and add button to add that to it. Was that even stretched? Yeah, it was. Do we have anything else from the demo? Uh, no, that was. <laughs> All right, since we're uh, pretty much wrapped up with the demo, I'll give you a little talk about how we worked on this back end. So the back end for our app is used, uh, we use the recently open source Parse platform. It uses a MongoDB instance, and it also is based off of Node.js. And so what we found during our research is we want to focus on creating this app, and we don't want to focus on standing up servers and dealing with security issues with that. And so Parse gave us a great library of tools on how we can manage um, Parse objects, which can be anything from arrays to image files to our individual pet objects. <laughs> and it gives us an easy way to be able to save them down in background to core data, also push them up to a nice uh, tool called the Parse dashboard, also open sourced, which is just a really easy to use layout of here's all your data for your app um, so we can test things out going from the front end to the back end. Okay, on the market side of our research, we found sort of a mixed bag on the positive side. There is uh, growing in the pet industry. Um, pet owners are very attached to their pets. They're becoming part of the family. And in the next two years, the millennials are finally gonna topple the baby boomers. So they're gonna drive the market and they are very um, invested in getting their pet the best services and products available. However, our competition, although non-existent directly right now, except for one app that's trying to launch beside us, um, <laughs> is that the actual travel industry for pets, so taking your pets to the hotel with you, traveling with them on vacation is also booming. So that might be some competition that we'll have to deal with. Um, overall, however, the only other close competition we have is a company called Rover, but their main focus is matching you with a professional pet sitter. And we were focused on friend-to-friend -friend sitting as a more affordable approach to leaving your pet behind when you can't travel with them. And in terms of our media and how we're going to reach our pet sitters and pet owners, we realize that 
Um, the beauty with Retreat is that it's face-to-face -face because our on-the-go pet parent really appreciates using someone that she's comfortable with and already has a relatively established connection with. So in terms of our marketing, we want to use some face-to-face -face gorilla tactics. So that includes sponsored doggy bags that we would coordinate with parks and rec departments of cities where there are a lot of young professional millennial women. And then we also were thinking of having sponsored coffee and hot chocolate outside dog parks. Again, establishing some face-to-face -face connection, getting the name out there, as well as having flyers and signage at popular coffee shops, vet um, offices, and boutique dog shops. And then in terms of the digital space, we would like to focus on Facebook, Spotify, and particularly Instagram, using influencers and popular dog accounts to showcase the app and show how the owners of maybe like Boo the dog uses Retreat to stay connected to Boo while the owner is away. Okay, in the future, we have some minor tweaks that we'd like to add to 2.0. Um, we'd like to be able to use push notifications and link to your iCloud account. We'd also like to be able to link to your social media pages um, as a profile, as a way to connect uh, consistent sitters and pet parents together because if I'm consistently leaving my dog with Ruben, it would be nice to go ahead and have his information in the profile instead of having to manually enter it like you do now. Um, we're also looking from the business aspects being able to reskin, retreat for other sitting purposes like house sitting or babysitting. Um, we would be able to, we're looking into integrating in ad or in app advertising as well as enhancement packages where we would cap how many free pets that you can sit at any one time and then you would pay for packages of four more pets, eight more pets, 12 more pets for young professionals who may want to do pet sitting on the side. And with that, we would like to open the floor to any questions. So what was it about Heroku that it just quit on you today? Was that the deal? Yeah, so uh, we discovered this morning that Heroku has a feature if you don't pay for a professional account, uh, they will cut your server time off at a cap of 18 hours. Um, so what we're not sure about is what they qualify as active use, because I don't think we were hitting it with queries for 18 hours for the past 18 hours, but somehow we reached that limit, and this morning Heroku was like, "Nope, you don't, you don't get to access anything," and we were, we had no idea what to do. So luckily, we got that resolved, and uh, we upgraded our account to a professional account, and everything's good now. Sorry, <laughs> it's okay. Um, I do have one thing. If you could go back to the simulator, um, it's just a small little design thing, but um, you can go to your pets. So I've had a dog for a year, and I don't plan on getting a dog for another nine years. So making an ad pet so big, and the first thing you see when you open it up is a little mm -hmm. unnecessary. At least if you want to keep it that size and thing, just push it to the end of the bit as list. Um, just a design thing. We, um, on the other sorry, hand, we. Long, the top page of this. But then how many times are you going to scroll over to all yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah, you, you could, I mean, you could easily make it less visually prominent mm -hmm. after a single yeah. So that it's just a white plus there rather than yep. ah. That was our plan actually. Uh, that's like a future like you know version okay. two kind yeah. of thing. Like once you add like one of you have no pets, that would be there. But once you add a pet, it won't be there quite as like in your base. We we're yep. actually considering switching from that button to the one that you see uh, for uh, the activity in the photos, where it's got the little plus button on mm -hmm. the side. Right. Um, it's just something to keep in mind for future iterations. And by the way, guys, the forms were amazing. I do a lot of forms and. Loved it. Um, by the way, though, for future reference, I wouldn't call reload data okay. when you would do the form. I would do reload cells and index path. Okay. That actually takes an animation. So instead of it just appearing, you could actually have it slide in, come from the middle. It just makes it a little more smooth. Yeah. Cool. Okay. There's a couple things on the email invite. There probably ought to be text before that code. So mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's a really, really small thing. Um, then uh, I think you guys did a really nice job of thinking through all the business possibilities here uh, in terms of how you could leverage income out of this thing. So <coughs> good job with that. Uh, I wondered about Instagram versus Snapchat. Like, why, why not Snapchat? That seems to be the thing, right? I f well, I feel like I'm not 100% sure on the research of it, but there are so many 
dog specific accounts on Instagram and the majority of them do have um, some type of sponsorship involved like tagging different companies and in photos. Oh, oh. And also to add on to that as you have repeatedly told us through this course to not reinvent the wheel. Um, many <laughs> like pet product companies find great success in advertising through uh, influencers on Instagram and honestly if it's working great for them I don't see why it wouldn't be more beneficial for us. Snapchat, I think, is more a human-to-human -human connection, whereas if you look at that cute dog on this cute app, maybe it'll just wear you down, and you'll download it. <laughs> no, fair enough, fair enough. I mean, I follow my nephew's dog on Instagram, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and then there's a couple other things that I want to point out. So they talk about your forms, but it, from a design standpoint, the fact that all you have to change is the background color to show the form is actively being edited versus not, um, that's a really simple thing as a designer you can ask for, and it's super effective. So you know, like, am I editing this, this data or am I just looking at it? Visually, it, you know, and by using the app more and more, you see that more and more. So remember these things that you can do as a designer to very subtly indicate things um, that are really cool and work. Um, that's what I have. So. I just had like, one quick question. When you add an autopad, what happens to your collection? If it goes down, or do you uh, horizontal scroll? Oh, yeah, it's a horizontal scroll. Yeah, you keep right. going. Yeah, that's how it, uh, that, would, that would work for all the collections. So for the pets and photos, you'd be able to slide horizontally, and then for the activities, it'd be a table view, so you'd just slide. Up and down. What's the little inbox up there on the right? Uh, that is for your invitations. So uh, it, when you receive an invitation, you would input the invitation code that you received through the text and accept, reject, or uh, choose not to respond. You might want to think about that icon, whether it communicates that clearly. Okay. okay.